In this video, we are going to look at simple linear regression. We have here the data of 10 households on their weekly family expenditure and weekly family income. So here, we are going to find out the values of R square, intercept alpha, slope beta, the regression equation, the standard error of alpha and beta, the p-value of alpha and beta for hypothesis testing, and finally, the confidence intervals of alpha and beta. The first step is to go to data. Click on data analysis. And in this data analysis box, we need to select regression and click OK. Now, here we're going to input the Y range. We just need to select the y variable which is the dependent variable in this case the weekly family expenditure depends on the weekly family income this means that weekly family expenditure is the dependent variable now select the weekly family expenditure data along with the heading now we need to input the x range weekly family income is the independent variable select the weekly family income along with the heading and because we have included the headings we need to tick this box that says labels next we specify the output option we can either get the output results in the same excel sheet or the output can be displayed in a new worksheet let's select that option new worksheet we can name the worksheet as regression output. Click OK. And a new worksheet called regression output is created with the summary output of our regression. So this is how we calculate the simple linear regression with the help of Excel. Now in this summary output, we are going to look at the R square, the coefficients, standard error, P value, lower 95 percentage and upper 95 percentage and interpret them. First of all, R square is 0 0.96. R square is equal to 0 0.96 indicates that about 96 percent of the variation in the consumption expenditure is explained by income. This means that the model is a very good fit. Next, we can look at the intercept alpha and the slope beta. With these, we frame the regression equation in the format y cap is equal to alpha plus beta x. So our alpha is 24.45 and our beta is 0 0.51. So this gives us the regression equation y cap is equal to 24.45 plus 0 0.51 x. This means that the autonomous consumption is rupees 24.47, that is, when the independent variable that is income is zero, the average level of consumption expenditure of the family is rupees 24.47. Now, if we look at the slope beta, it indicates that if income increases by rupees 100, the estimated increase in average consumption expenditure is rupees 51. We can see here that weekly family income and weekly family expenditure have a positive relationship meaning that if income increases expenditure also increases but the rate of increase in the consumption expenditure is lesser than the rate of increase in income which means that the marginal propensity to consume is lesser than one now let's take a look at the standard error of alpha and beta this standard error is an estimate of the standard deviation of the coefficients and is a measure of precision. The standard error of alpha is 6.414, which is comparatively lesser than the intercept value 24.45. The slope coefficient 0.51 is also larger compared to its standard error of 0.036. So we can say that both the coefficients probably differ from 0, which means that they are significant. Now, we'll take a look at the p-value for alpha and beta. For the hypothesis testing of alpha, 
formulate a null hypothesis H0 that says alpha is equal to 0, meaning that alpha or the intercept is statistically insignificant. If the p value for alpha are lesser than 0 0.05, we reject this null hypothesis. Then the alternate hypothesis H1 will be accepted, which says alpha is not equal to 0, which means that alpha or the intercept is statistically significant. Similarly, for the slope beta, we formulate a null hypothesis beta is equal to 0, which means that beta is statistically insignificant. If we reject this null hypothesis, the alternate hypothesis H1 will be accepted, which says beta is not equal to 0, meaning beta is statistically significant. If the coefficients are statistically significant, then our regression results are good. If you take a look at the p value over here, you can see that it is in a scientific notation that is 5.75275. E minus 0 0.7. This value does not equal 5.75 but 0 0.00. The p value for both alpha and beta are lesser than 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis that we formulated that the coefficients equal 0. Both the coefficients are statistically significant. Finally, we have the confidence intervals of both coefficients alpha and beta. These confidence intervals are found in the lower 95 percentage and upper 95 percentage in the summary output. So for the intercept alpha, lower 95 percentage is 9.66 and upper 95 percentage is 39.24. And for the slope beta, lower 95 percentage is 0 0.43 and the upper 95 percentage is 0 0.59. So this means that we are 95% confident that the real underlying value of the intercept lies between 9.66 and 39.24 and that the real underlying value of the slope lies between 0 0.43 and 0 0.59. This is how we interpret the simple linear regression model.